the interpreter. You see, he doesn't understand the, the particular course we are doing. As the lecturer is saying, maybe not only him, but generally people who understand it. So how he convey the information to me was very hard for me to understand. Disability, they say, is not inability. Lydia Abeye Aqua is a proof of this adage. As a deaf person, she has been able to graduate from the University of Mines and Technology with a Master of Business Technology Management. I am off to her residence to find out how she was able to do this amidst all the challenges. <laughs> Breaking barriers is no small feat, and Lydia Abeye Aqua, a hearing impaired student, has done just that. Lydia defied the odds and graduated with a master's degree from the University of Mines and Technology, UMAT, in Takwa, in the western region of Ghana. Her accomplishment is not only a testament to her hard work and determination, but also an inspiration to others facing similar challenges. Lydia was born hearing, but became hearing impaired after the age of 10. So, she practically knew how to speak before she lost her ability to hear. Due to this, she's able to speak properly, but she just cannot hear. So when I became deaf, from 10 years, see, when I go to the classroom, I would pretend as if I can hear, but I can't hear. And my teachers, they would send me to go and buy something. I will not hear. I think I should keep the money. So I will spend the money. Then I will come back to the class. Then the teacher is asking, after a long time, the teacher in the middle of the teaching was the leader. Where is my granite? Then I will go out. I will go and talk to somebody and find money and then bring it back. I will say that when I went, the granite was finished. <laughs> but I left the money somewhere and I forgot it, so I'm bringing it back. It happened to me many times. I always made up a story. So after some time, some of the teachers began to notice me. I think you have a problem with your hearing. But I passed through. But with all the challenges that come with deafness, she never relented on pursuing her dreams in life. She worked hard and overcame every obstacle in her path from primary, secondary, and tertiary levels and finally graduating with a cumulative weighted average of 76.80% from the Master of Business Technology Management program at the Faculty of Integrated Management Science during the just-ended 14th congregation of the University of Mines and Technology in Takwa, where she focused on management information systems. According to Lydia, after becoming hearing impaired, people began stigmatizing her in her community and she could no longer sell for her mother as she used to do. And even as a church singer, she could no longer sing. As a singer, I had a nice voice. But when I became deaf, my voice turned into different sounds so I started singing. It was like a shame to me around 10 years and up. So people look down on you. People know they don't welcome you and see you have done something bad by becoming deaf. And if you get around people, you don't feel welcome because you see some general Something around people, I cannot explain, but everywhere you go, you see that thing around them, they don't welcome you. So you begin to pull away from people. 
and then the friends who had children friends who lost them because they think when they talk you don't understand them so they don't waste time on you but the stigma did not deter her from continuing with her education. She says, irrespective of her deafness, she was one of the best students at the JHS level because she was a very brilliant student in class. Thankfully, God gave me a good brain. So I could learn and then pass my exams from the primary school to the junior high. I tried. I think I was one of the best student in my school in those days. Gaining admission to the Takwa Senior High School to pursue business was another hurdle for Lydia as she learned on her own. One of her challenges was taking down notes any time the teachers decided to dictate. Since she couldn't hear anything, she had to resort to lip reading to get an idea of what the teachers were saying but that wasn't much help either. A classmate by name Patient Sako came to her aid by deciding to write the notes for her any time teachers decided to dictate. When I went to SS, that was to, I wanted to study science. But when you go there, you have to write exams, depending on the subject that you pass before they would tell whether you do science or and I did well in English, in the maths, I didn't do well in the science. So one of the teachers said, because I'm deaf, I should go and do business. Because business, accounting and other things, you would just be sitting on the computer and then not much interaction with people. So I was doing, I was learning on my own. And there was one mate, she's called Patience Sabu. She was a sweet, good person. I think God just put him there for me. <laughs> and then when we go to the classroom and the teacher is dictating the notes, she will be writing her own notes. At the same time, she will be writing my own. That is how I did it to the very end. And I will be sitting in front every time to read the teacher's lips. If the teacher pens, then I'm lost. But I did well by reading on my own. And many of my students were very proud of me at SS level. I was learning with the high, high intelligent people. When we finished SS, I was among the best at that time. After completing Takwa Senior High School, she enrolled at the Equiapen Mampon Secondary Technical School for the Deaf, where she learned the sign language before entering the University of Ghana to study business administration, human resource option. As the only hearing impaired student in the lecture hall with an interpreter in front of the whole class, she felt uncomfortable because all eyes were on her. Due to this, she stopped going for lectures altogether and her interpreter also decided to stop. This, she said, affected her performance badly as she began to fail. This night, I was having the feeling of like, being an old deaf in the whole lecture place. I was a very big walk, very big walk. And then you sit in front with a silent way, the interpreter was feeling uncomfortable at all. Everybody watching me. But that was an immature feeling. I was not very knowledgeable, knowledgeable around that time. What I would say to other deaf people, if they experience the same thing, they should never feel shy. Because for me, it's a glorious thing not to hear among so many people the experience within. Only you know what is inside. You see it. And to be able to understand letters with a sign language interpreting is a marvelous thing. Any deaf should feel proud of. So, with this challenge for me, and I was not going to the letter because I didn't want people looking at me. And that was also 
not encouraging for my integrators. So they stop coming to help me. At a point in time, the university almost revoked their admission. But thanks to the intervention of one lecturer, Dr. Kwabna Edupoku, Lydia was able to continue with her education. Later on to meet our school, um, one of the lecturers, he had experience with deaf people. So I went to meet him and then I told him my challenges. He encouraged me and then he met the university authorities. So they decided to allow me to continue. You see it. But because of me, they made that man the disability coordinator of the university. I think for the first time, the university had a disability coordinator through that man, Dr. Kwabena Ebupopo. And then after, after, from that time on, I began to do well. Actually, I was fired. Something wonderful happened to me. My performance in so I managed to graduate so Thirteen years after completing her first degree, Lydia decided to enroll for a master's degree at the University of Mines and Technology. Because of initial challenges she went through due to her form of disability, Lydia worked closely with the university management, some lecturers and course mates to be able to appreciate some complex course concepts, and because of that, she was able to persevere. The university ensured also that she had the necessary assistance, such as sign language interpreters, to enable her fully participate in lectures and other academic activities. Finally, the day of graduation arrived, and Lydia walked across the stage to receive her master's degree, and she felt a sense of pride and accomplishment that she had never before felt. She looked out into the crowd and saw her family and friends cheering her on, and she knew in that moment that all of her hard work had been worth it. She describes UMAT as an exceptional institution that fosters practical learning and says that its faculty, staff, and students are very supportive. Initially, the university was, was not having the resources, so they wouldn't provide me fast. It almost affected my admission. But I have to help them to know that I can do it. Whether they give me uh, interpreting service or not, so they were very happy by that. So they decided to work on me to continue the, my goal. And so I started, we started, so along the line, the university came in to support because they would see that it was very important. I had a lot of challenges in the masters. And sometimes the interpreter, you see, he doesn't understand the, the particular course we are doing. As the lecturer is saying, maybe not only him, but generally people who understand it. So how he conveyed the information to me it was very hard for me to understand. But some to interpret him. But when I don't understand, my mates, first mates, they spend time with me to explain it so that I was able to follow. And then my thesis, the same thing. The head of the Department for Management Studies at UMAT, Dr. Kofi Kamasa, tells our reporter that the school admitted Lydia without knowing she was hearing impaired. When we received her admission documents, I think that we, we didn't um, know that she was deaf. Okay, yeah. So we gave the admission, and after the admission was given, and she reported that is why we want to know that she was uh, um, a special student. And so, engagement with the Dean of Postgraduate School at the time, and then some members of the university, I mean, 
we realize that no, we cannot withdraw the admission. Upon finding out about her condition after her admission, the necessary assistance was provided for Lydia to go through the program successfully. If, if you are hearing impaired and you are taking certain courses which are quantitative in nature, um, even though you may have an interpreter to be interpreting the things to you, when we are talking of formulas here and quantitative issues, there are little bit challenge that comes there because it's difficult to interpret like like quadratic equation for you to you get a point. Yeah. So I think that those were some of the challenges that she was facing initially. But with time I think she, she became comfortable and she was able to actually pursue it through. And then also knowing that um, um, that was what was facing her, I think the lectures were also made aware, and so their mode of teaching was also a bit um, 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 flexible so that it could also cater for her as well. And that's, that's how we would do it, so that she, she managed to um, do the course just as the other friends who were here. Yes. According to Dr. Kofi Kamasa, the university is always prepared to help persons living with disability any time they gain admission. He said everyone has the right to education, adding that Lydia defied all the odds and went on to pursue her dream irrespective of her disability. He urged PWDs not to allow their disability hinder them from climbing the academic ladder. When it comes to education, we know that um, in Ghana uh, we have inclusive education. Nobody should be left out. And like we said, um, if someone is impaired, it doesn't mean that the person is incapable of doing anything. There are, there are a lot of examples where people with disability have risen to the very red top as far as the academic ladder is concerned. So as an university where we embrace these things, um, if, if where we are, we are, we are also um, disability friendly, you know, if we get situations like that, we are always prepared to help and make sure that Nobody loses their, their right and dream to education because of their um, um, inability or their disability status. So we are, we are fully prepared we are fully prepared to embrace those things. Of course, um, Lydia's case has, has given us more eye-opening situations where it has even made the university more friendly as far as these special students are concerned. Lydia's sign language interpreter Richmond Bedu tells me why he accepted to be her interpreter. I had a call from Lydia that she wanted me to be her personal interpreter. I really wanted to accept such a challenge. Because to be frank with you, that was the first time of venturing into such a such a, I was finding myself in such a situation. I have not actually been at the tertiary level to interpret. So I actually accepted the the mantle one because of the passion I have for the deaf people. I'm, I'm someone who always advocates concerning issues of, uh, of deafness because I really, hope, I really want to see them always at the top, to see them achieving or aspiring for greater heights. So I went in just to make sure that uh, her vision of acquiring something better in terms of her career has been achieved. According to him, the challenge taught him a lot of things. He said he made a lot of sacrifices just to make sure that Lydia graduated successfully. He mentioned some of the challenges he faced along the line. At the start, when, when we began, you know, I was at the same time a student at the University of Mines and Technology, the same school that Lydia attended. I was, I think, level 200 during that period. But uh, I just considered the fact that she was going to have it at the weekends. You know, that is Saturdays and Sundays. Although sometimes we had group meetings and some other meetings on the on weekends, but I decided to sacrifice in that regard to make sure that she's able to have the best of it. And another thing also that I encountered while I was with Lydia was that, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a higher level of education. And then there are certain terminologies or certain things that are being 
uh, that are being taught, I have no knowledge or idea about. So what, what happened was that I was mostly dependent on the lecturer. Whatever that the lecturer says, that is what I deliver. But you know the pace at which the lecturer will go with the, the hearing students. I have to really grasp the concepts. So I even have to pause the lecture at the point in time to explain it further for me to get a clearer picture of it before I will be able to convey the meaning to Lydia. While commending UMAT for accepting Lydia, Mr. Beidou called on the Ministry of Education and other educational institutions to incorporate sign language into their curriculum and also make sign language interpretation available to make it easy for the hearing impaired to access education. I would like to commend the University of Mines and Technology for such an amazing opportunity given to Lydia to explore. Actually, though Lydia has been able to pursue her career, it has also helped me as a sign language interpreter to better my profession. We are pleading with all institutions to actually incorporate the learning of sign language as well as even having interpreters available to be of help whenever such a dev wants to visit their outfit. I think this, this is going to create a, a bigger platform for the deaf people to reach higher heights. And then again, my final proposal is to the government that I think, and in my candid opinion, I think once we start the learning of sign language right from the basic schools, it's really going to be of help in the sense that the children are going to grow with it. And once they grow with it, already we've created an inclusive education. And that is going to make things simpler for the deaf people. And we are going to produce more sign language interpreters for Ghana. Lydia expressed her appreciation to Richmond Bedu for availing himself to be her interpreter. So this interpreter, besides for me as well, is advocating making sure that I advance. Uh, if many interpreters have that attitude of fighting for deaf, helping create awareness of deaf issues, I think a lot of deaf people will have big, big opportunities. And I, I appreciate the attitude of Mr. Richmond advocacy with power. Love found Lydia while she was at the University of Ghana. Her husband, Samuel Asamoa recalls how he met and got attracted to her. So I met her at the University of Ghana. I think uh, we were in uh, Pensa, but I really thought I met her just once. And when I met her, I just saw something strange and attractive. Uh, and then later I got closer and I got to realize that um, this is a lady I would like to marry. She's a very bold person, and that really attracted me to her. So I would say life, love blinds, okay? Yeah, because of the love, I didn't really see that she has a problem. Yeah, so that is how I live with her. I live with her with that mindset, so we live together peacefully. Mr. Samoa has learned sign language through Lydia, and that is the means through which they communicate, and he's always ready to support his wife in diverse ways, even up to the point of her achieving her PhD. I would, I would like to see her going as far as PhD. Yeah, because um, she has a very sharp memory. And she can be, she be able, she's able to memorize a lot of things more than I do. So I encourage her to go higher in the academic level. Ever wondered how Lydia, as a mother, would know when her child is crying, when she's not close by to see the baby's gestures? Well, thanks to her husband, she doesn't have to worry anymore about that. As a deaf uh, wife, she wouldn't be able to hear the baby's crying. But I played that role. So when the baby cries, I would prompt her that the baby's crying and then she can do the breastfeeding. Um, as a father in a home, I also hear for her. Actually, I'm her hearing, okay? I'm the one who feels that lack. Uh, I hear for her whenever she needs to hear around her. 
I make her to hear so that she won't feel that even she has any disability. According to Mr. Samoa, because of how the society sees the hearing impaired, they do not have a lot of information and this has become a hindrance to their development. He is of the view that government should put in measures to make the hearing impaired have access to information. Education can be defined as um, a change of behavior due to uh, learning something. Okay? But generally speaking, deaf people do not have access to a lot of information because of how our society uh, uh, view them or treat them. But when you visit our banks, you only really have sign language interpreters. When you, you visit our schools, there are no sign language interpreters to help the deaf children in, the, in, in most of the schools. So in this regard, they won't get enough information to even really have a change of behavior as is the goal of proper education. So because of that, uh, in some aspects of life, okay, the deaf may not respond appropriately, but that doesn't mean that they're not behaving well, but because the society have not structured things in a proper way that will help them to uh, have a change of behavior through education from the society. Lydia Abeye Aqua wants the government to make sign language a general subject for all school-going children as she believes it will help everyone to know sign languages. What I want to say is we should make sign language a general subject for all children in Ghana because <clears throat> sign language is the way deaf people learn. That is their language. Sign language is like any other language and how sign language conveys information for us deaf people is more powerful than hearing. <clears throat> So, if, if uh, GES, the government, makes, makes silent with compulsory for all children in Ghana, everybody will be fine. Everybody will be fine. Because at a point, even old people, they will become deaf. So, by the time we arrive at being deaf, we are not praying for people to become in deaf, but that is a possibility. So, if you become deaf and you know sign language, your family will know sign language. You are okay. With the aim of becoming a linguist, Lydia has gained admission to the Gallaudet University, a private federally chartered research university in Washington, D.C., for the education of the hearing impaired and is pursuing a master in linguistics course that she hopes would help her to return to support language development of the hearing impaired in Ghana. She is therefore soliciting for the support of organizations and individuals to help her pursue that dream. You see, even the whole world, we have very few deaf people who are linguists. Even women, deaf women who are deaf linguists, we don't have enough deaf linguists. So I see this for me to stand I mean, get more education to learn about linguistics, so I can use this to come to Ghana here to support all their people and also to stand as women with disability who aspire for higher education and are achieving innovative things in the society. And so I've applied to the Garden University and I got admission already to go. But I need support scholarship. I have to I apply for the fall 2023. 20, so I need the scholarship to, to help me to go and study. The university currently do not have support for international people. Lydia's success is a reminder of the importance of inclusivity in education. It is essential to create an environment where all students, regardless of their disabilities, feel supported and empowered to succeed. By breaking barriers and achieving her goals, Lydia has opened doors for other hearing impaired students 
and shown that anything is possible with hard work and determination. Lydia's success has brought light into the lives of persons living with disability. No matter where you are, you can also climb to the top of the academic ladder, irrespective of your disability. From Takwa in the Western Region, Thomas Tete reporting for Ghana Web. Thank you.